Roxanne LeBlanc, one of the owners here at Vaudeville Entertainment, your top choice for variety talent in California, Louisiana, and Florida, where I'm at today for the Vaudeville Entertainment photo shoot. I'm so excited. This is for our upcoming show, Runaway with the Circus, a peek behind the curtain, and that's exactly what I'm providing you today, a peek behind our awesome photo shoot that I'm excited to take you on. Shout out to Macbeth Studios here in College Park. We are so grateful to you, Jim Hobart, for shooting this for us. You are so talented, and we love you so much. All right, guys, come on for the fun. So Lars, what inspires you to do Sideshow? Sideshow means a lot to me. It was passed down by a very close friend of mine, and unfortunately he's no longer here. Um, Sideshow acts are not normally just given out. They are given to people who will uphold the legacy of Sideshow and keep Sideshow alive, and he trusted that in me. So this is to make him proud. This is for you, Tristan. I love you, man. Circus in a box, circus in a box. This is our incredible ace in the hole performer, Noah. Sword swaller, juggler, clown, still walker, all of the above. You're so talented. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. So Noah, what is something that you wish audience members knew about the art of sword swallowing? Well, initially, the first thing is, it's not fake, it's real. It actually took me about five years to learn just so much training. It's essentially yoga. It's like remaining calm under extreme circumstances, having a sword in your body. <laughs> and there's about a uh, hundred living sword swallowers on earth today, and now I'm one of them, yes. And most importantly, do not try this at home. Lauren, when did you know that you were meant to be a vocalist? So I was five years old and I was driving in the car with my mom and this was back in the day of cassette tapes, so don't judge me. Um, but we had the tape at the time that we were listening to was Pocahontas soundtrack. It was all Pocahontas, loved it. One day we get in the car and my mom accidentally left her Phantom of the Opera tape in the car. And she was like, oh, do you want me to put in Pocahontas? And I was like, no, this is pretty, I like it. And I was able to sing the music at five. And that's how I knew I was meant to be a vocalist. It's kind of funny because a lot of the people in my family do very logic-based careers. We have teachers, engineers, rocket scientists, and then we have vocalist Lauren. And even though I do have a career as a recruiter, I love getting to sing. It is my passion in life because nothing beats the feeling of singing for people. It could be at someone's birthday party. It could be at a show on International Drive. It could be over hundreds, if not thousands of people. And Every single time I do it, I love it, and I love that rush, but one time isn't enough. It's never enough. I'm gonna introduce you guys to our photographer for the day. This is Jim Hobart, owner of Macbeth Studios here in College Park. If you're ever in town, he does a rotating art show. You guys have to come see it. He is so talented, seriously. One of the best photographers in Orlando. I'm so grateful for you today. Thank you so much for shooting us. We love you. So Skylar, what's it like running a circus? Well, first off, I don't run this circus myself. For any one person to run this circus would be a Herculean feat. 
There are three owners and there are six producers and we cover three troops from Florida, Louisiana, and California with dozens if not hundreds of independent contractors. So it's a really major operation really and it, it takes everybody working in unison and kind of uh, playing to each other's strengths. And, and when everything's going well, when the lights are on and, and the, the show is rolling, it can be very rewarding. It's exciting, it's exhilarating. But behind the curtain, the things that you don't see can be extremely draining. It can be challenging. Fighting for respect for ourselves and for our performers. Fighting for rates. Everybody I know um, has to work multiple jobs just to allow themselves the, 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 the freedom to perform. And so what's that like? That's like feeding your soul. That's why we do this, because it's part of our purpose on this earth. And it's truly a joy to be able to share that with you today. This is Brianna. Not only is she one of our performers at Vaudeville, she's also one of our producers. What's your favorite thing about being one of the director of operations at Vaudeville Entertainment? You know, I just love getting to create events for people. I love getting to bring them to life. I love getting to see people's vision come true and getting to provide that for them as a service is just something that warms my heart so much. Yeah! yeah. We're so grateful to have you. Why, thank you. There you go. Good, right there, good. I struggle with chronic pain and um, bending and contorting my body around an inanimate spinning object is not always <laughs> the funnest even though I do really enjoy it and it brings me um, a lot of creative like opportunities it, it's and it's physically challenging and it keeps me in great shape um, belly dancing you can be any shape you can be any size you can be any level of like strength and flexibility uh, the belly dance community is a lot more um, open, uh, open arms, if that makes sense. When I saw belly dancers for the first time, actually, at the Renaissance Fair when I was like 12 years old, that was the first time I ever saw women that looked like me, you know? Like, growing up, I, I didn't, I'm not gonna say I had body dysmorphia, because it wasn't that extreme, but I definitely didn't look like my friends. I didn't look like the girls in, in Cosmo Girl when they still published that magazine. Um, and so when I, when I saw these girls at the Renaissance Fair shaking and shimmying and they were every size, shape, and color, I knew that that was a community that I really wanted to get involved in. And, and I remember going to the library and like renting um, VHSs. And that's, that was, because my, my dad, I grew, I grew up in the South, in Louisiana. There was no way he was gonna pay for me to take belly dancing classes. So I would rent VHS dance shimmy and shake classes um, from the library. And that, those were my first classes. Good. <laughs> 